Good afternoon, everybody. I'm joined by our commander of our Criminal Investigations Division, as well as one of our supervisors and one of our detectives from our homicide unit. Within the last hour, the New Orleans Police Department has placed 17-year-old Michael Dixon under arrest in the deadly shooting on Sullen Place that happened this past Saturday that claimed the life of a 15-year-old boy in Algiers. Through a follow-up investigation, our homicide detectives learned the story initially told on the night of the shooting was not adding up. Based on evidence found on the scene and on social media, we believe the shooting actually occurred inside of the residence in the 3900 block of Sullen Place, as opposed to outside as the investigators were originally led to believe. Dixon is now charged with second degree murder and is currently being held in Orleans Parish Justice Center. This remains an active investigation even at this hour and even if additional details become available, we will certainly provide them to you with any updates. In addition to Sullen Place, we also made quick arrests in two other high profile cases this week, including the deadly shooting that occurred on Ursula Spencer Way in the Desire neighborhood late Monday night. By early Tuesday morning, the NOPD had Joanne McDonald, McDaniel in custody, charged with second degree murder in connection with the shooting death of 17 year old Tajana Williams. And on Sunday, our homicide division arrested 19 year old man in connection with the CBD shooting that left 34 year old May Francois dead. We booked the shooter, Quan T. Charles, with second degree murder. These results are a testament to how serious we take these incidents in our community and that we work around the clock to clear these cases. Many times, as you know, we cannot share our information or materials with the press because it could compromise our investigations and the work that our homicide detectives are actually doing. But feel confident that we are working every angle on all of these cases to arrest and to prosecute people causing mayhem on the streets of New Orleans. This is the second time in two months where we've had a case where someone gave us misleading information in an effort to cover up what actually happened. But through the excellent work of our detectives, they were able to work through that misleading information to get to the truth. And we couldn't be more happy with the work that they're doing and we give them our full support. At this time, I'll take any questions that you may have. I would say at this time there were known acquaintances, uh, but not to go any further into any detail. Does the NOPD plan on making any other types of arrests in that um, Sullivan Place shooting uh, obstruction of justice for misleading information or anything? Well, it's still an active investigation, and should more information or evidence come forward that would bring us to that, certainly we'll keep all of our options open and we'll bring that to you. Was there any victim's name in the story? The victim's name. Uh, the victim's name is not given. It's a 15 year old, so we are not given the victim's name. Well, what we can say is that the information that we were given and the, the information that we were led to believe when our investigators were out there that night was not what we learned through the evidence. And the evidence is pointing to something different, uh, which led us to uh, an arrest warrant signed by a judge. He's been arrested and just recently, within the last hour, has been brought over to the Justice Center. Is he being held as an adult at this point? Now, well, he, he's 17 years old, so he's brought over to the, to, the, to the Adult Justice Center. Chief, can you share with us what type of evidence that was? Well, our, our detectives are always looking for all types of evidence, and I think that's a matter that's going to be uh, best talked about in the court, and we're going to preserve that for court purposes. What we can say, it was enough evidence that a judge felt sufficient to sign the arrest warrant. You said this is the second time that you've been given misleading information. Can you say what the other time was? Well, just, just, just last month, uh, there was a shooting in Algiers on Garden Oaks where there was a, a eight-year-old boy shot. And we were led to believe that the boy went outside after hearing popping sound and was shot by a stray bullet. As it turns out, there was an adult male inside the house that was playing with the gun and the mother and another adult coached the kid on what to say and then they gave misleading information to the police. We took action against that mother. Um, and so what we want to make sure is that we get correct information when we are out there on the scene. It's imperative that we do that. But this is a great example, two great examples actually, of d investigators and police officers working diligently 
to get to the truth and breaking down bad information to get to the truth and we found the truth and now we're holding people accountable. Um, we have the one person that we've arrested. We know that there were other individuals that, that we broadcasted through the media that we could have been looking for. Certainly we need help from anybody in the community that may know who those folks are and where they would have gone. So please call us or call Crime Stoppers right away. Um, but we were happy that each one of these murders were solved within a week's time. That speaks to the hard work that these detectives, this lead detective, his supervisor and his commander, and all their support teams working in the homicide unit are doing every single day. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, guys.